Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Game Theory Reaction. You're programmed to click on this video. Oh, that is absolutely wonderfully ominous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so this is a theory about what I would imagine is going to be about Kinito Pet, which, if you haven't seen, uh, is a game that's kind of been making its way around. Uh, it's based on... Oh, what if you were given like one of those little like like er, late 90s early 2000s like desktop assistants in fact I this one actually uses the same voice and I think is heavily based off of oh god I'm forgetting the name it's 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 a monkey um it's like a purple monkey what's it called Bonzi buddy that's it yeah, so it's based off, it's like, it's heavily based off of like Bonzi Buddy. I think, again, I think it even uses the same like voice, like uh, artificial voice um, thing for it, which, but also like the stuff it does, like you play the game and then it, like it redoes your desktop to look like it's like a Windows Vista or Windows 95 desktop. And it's just, it looked so cool. I I've, I have, haven't played it yet for myself, unfortunately, but I have seen them played on GT Live. And it like, that's the thing. It's like, it's like, it's sort of like a horror game, but it's not so much a horror game in that, oh, it's like there's like a soul trapped in the machine that's trying to kill you or something. It's much more like unnerving. Like, there's obviously something hidden in the background of this game. Um, but it's more like it you it wants to be your friend. It wants to make the world just for you, which, is, you know, was kind of creepy is for something like that. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know what this video is going to be going into. Uh, you're programmed to click on this video. I... Yeah, I'm kind of at a, a, a loss of what that could possibly mean. So... Yeah, let's get into this then, shall we? <laughs> so yeah, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen that for some reason. Corner video will lead to my film theory reaction. And of course, if you have any suggestions for future stuff for me to react to, you can leave them in the comment section below or go to my Discord server, link in the description, and go to the actual suggestions channel and just leave the link to the video there. But yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get this thing actually started then, shall we? Hello, Internet. I'm your new host, Tommy Oh, jeez. I can't that's, wait to show you that's all That's not new creepy features. at all. I just need you to do one tiny thing for me. Give Hit me your soul. No. It will allow me to get the most out of all these wonderful features. Thank you so much. We are going to have so much fun together. Everlasting fun. Yeah, that's not creepy at Hello, all. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's downloaded too many viruses in the name of content. Dear theorists, do you remember those weird desktop assistants we used to have back in the early 2000s? Like yeah. Rover or Clippy? No, am I kidding? Of course you don't. That was 24 years ago. Basically ancient history in Internet years. <sighs> But that's the thing, like, I remember Clippy, though, <laughs> Clippy wasn't so much a desktop assistant, it was more just for Word. I mean, unless there was a way to have them on all the time. And even then, I I never even knew when I was younger that there were other versions of, like, the, uh, of a, of a desktop assistant that you could base, like, a wizard and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I just, I just was never the type of person to play around with that sort of stuff. Oh no, I'm old, aren't I? But man, these things were weird. They were these little animated characters that would hang out on your desktop and were designed to make your newfangled computer seem a little less intimidating. They'd yeah. talk to you, help you sort files, and they'd even sass you when you spelled something wrong. Yes, Clippy, I know ban ban isn't a real word. I don't like it either. Let me do <laughs> my job! But the most iconic for me was the infamous Bonzi Buddy. Once installed, a small purple gorilla would appear on your screen and gorilla, jokes, not monkey. Songs, and he would also manage your downloads. And if you couldn't hear those quotation marks by manage, I mean it would secretly download software onto your computer and then upload data to the developer's servers. Turns out this thing was nothing more than a glorified piece of spyware. And so it was shut down by the FTC in 2004. After that, the world was safe from purplish malware icons. That was until 2023 and we were all cursed with a brand new desktop assistant, Kanito Pets. Pets. Okay, so yeah. Kanito Pet isn't 
actually a desktop assistant. It's, it's a, a game. game. Hence, you know, game theory. But it is riffing off those old school 2000s desktop assistants. When you first boot up Kinita Pet, you're taken to your own desktop, or at least a version of your desktop if it was from the early 2000s. There's yeah. all the classics, email, Minesweeper, even 3D Pinball. The 3D Pinball though. Oh my gosh, this brings oh back God, I remember 3D yes. Pinball so oh, much. Oh man, immediately hitting me in the nostalgia. Oh, I've missed those sounds. Why don't we have this anymore on our computer? But when you open the internet, things start to take a turn. Oh, the stream has been corrupted. Oh no, Kinito Pad. Oh. oh God, so many pop-ups. You're flooded with ads, your computer crashes, and when it reloads, you're already on your way to downloading your new Axolotl Assistant, Kinito Pet. When it hatches, yes, this thing hatches from an egg. Kinito acts like most classic desktop assistants, asking some basic questions, helping you with your tasks, and giving you some fun games to play. He even closes weird emails full of gibberish that would distract you from having fun. How helpful. <laughs> you spend some time decorating a room, washing some floors, painting a wall, and dragging a dead body across the screen. That's weird. And I just cleaned yeah, that Yeah, very too. much so. Kinito Again! Unless I, like, misinterpreted something from the GT live streams, it didn't seem like the program itself was, like, uh, possessed. Well, I mean, actually, I guess there were a few, but it was sort of weird where it sort of, like, it flip-flopped from seeming, oh, the program is possessed, to the program is becoming sentient. It, it, it's, like, it's like, I, I couldn't quite pick, uh, pick which one was actually real just sweeps us under the rug and continues to ask us more and more personal questions. But yeah. the game begins to glitch out and Kinito will suddenly select two Steam friends asking which one you'd rather kill. At this point, I'm kind of starting to miss Bonzi Buddy. Oh, yeah. hey, look, it's me. Oh, I have to choose between Lee and Tom? Film theory versus game theory. Oh, fi film theory and game theory. Who am I killing off? Matt, what are you doing? Lee and I go way back. Don't you even think about it. Sorry, Tom. Matt, stop. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's awesome. That's such a good effect. Sorry, Tom. Oh man, that's brutal. Dude. Oh, I'm okay. I'm alive. Are you? Good are thing you okay? Shot roulette taught me I could survive fatal gunshots with just a defibrillator. But man, not cool. Oh, we're gonna be having words when I'm done with this episode. But if you think it couldn't get any worse, after you've unceremoniously killed one of your friends, Kinito decides to dox you. It seems like you made a mistake yeah, when filling so, out dude. your address. But don't worry, and I will just correct it for you. What are you talking? Oh, no. What are you doing? Oh, this is not good! And then you are welcomed into a brand new world that Kanito has made for you using all the questions you've answered. Are you kidding me? That Garden is not of okay. Ban that Ban. That was a joke. Get. I remember out of that. Here. Garden of Ban Ban is in Kanito Pet. I'm done. This is over. This series is over. We're done, Kanito Pet. And then Kanito will ask you one final question. Will you stay in this paradise with him forever? If you say yes, Kanito will trail off, dreaming of how wonderful things will be. If you say no, Kanito will get mad and he'll tell you it wasn't really a choice anyway. Either way, he ends up singing a very portalesque song with lyrics like, Beyond the screen, you cannot leave. Inside my code, you'll always be. It appears that you are now trapped inside this computer with Kanito. Fortunately, the story's not over because just no, before thankfully. the game ends, you have a chance to click on every object in the house that Kanito has made. Usually it's just some fun flavor text about your choices, but outside there's a fountain that reveals a secret message in the game's window title. It's too late for you, but you can start again. The fountain is the key. Between that, the weird emails, and that body bag we dragged earlier, I have a sneaking suspicion that there's an ARG hiding in this There's thing. something behold, going I, on right, here. But there if you're always what's going is. on and stop Kenito, we need to take that advice and restart the game. So hide your personal data, friends, because we are diving into the code of this adorable ARG monster. I think we should probably start with the dead body we dragged across the floor earlier like yeah, very, what was that on the surface that's very out there like unless you're physically being pulled into the world where is that body coming from <laughs> just really confusing but now that i have my arg hat on i realize there's a lot of blinking you'll miss it moments while cleaning sam the sea and enemy's house there's a chance for the screen to cut away and reveal a mysterious black figure standing in a pool of blood with bloody red text on the walls this text is incredibly hard to make out even in 4k it's just a blurry mess the best I could figure out was, am I even him? Who is him? Kinito Pet? Before I even had a chance to really think about it, though, we get another glitched image of Sam himself telling us, it's all your fault. What? What's my fault? What did I do? Okay. Oh, yeah that. Luckily though, the body bag doesn't appear to be ours. During the next mini game with Jade the Jellyfish, we are tasked with building specific items on her conveyor belt. Why she has industrial equipment in her private home is beyond me, but it doesn't really matter because she just begins to glitch out as well. And then we see this screen. 
I'm back here again, aren't I? I really didn't mean for any of this. It's all my fault. So there's a conversation happening inside our computer between these entities. Someone or something is responsible for what is presumably a murder, but how? And more importantly, why? Well, the answers lie in that email I mentioned earlier. You remember yeah, the, the one, one that was that's just gibberish. That Nito closed so that we weren't distracted. The subject line is, it's not too late, which matches exactly with what we saw in the fountain at the end of our first playthrough. It's the same person trying to guide us. And so we need to figure out what this email says if we have any chance of solving this thing. And if you think closing an app is going to stop me, you've clearly never met a theorist. I was no, able to use yeah. a magical tool known as OBS to record this moment and see what the email had in store for me. Now, initially, I tried to solve the main body of the text from this email, but all my usual ciphers were coming up empty. So instead, I took a look at the bottom of the email where I found a QR code. Oh, oh boy, here yeah, we go. Answers, that go. Here I come. And it's just a picture of a keyboard with the title QWERTY. Great. This has to be a clue to help us to code the email, but how? I began searching online for Cypher specifically focusing around keyboards, and that's when I found this, a keyboard shift Cypher. Much like a shift Cypher where your alphabet is just moved up or down by however many letters you want, a keyboard Cypher does the same thing by shifting the letters on your keyboard left, right, up, or down. I tried out a handful of shifts, and sure oh, enough, okay. the code has been typed with every key one letter to the left. So by shifting all the letters one key right, it actually reads, in the realm of shadows trapped in endless time, a soul in shroud a spirit's mournful chime, the seeker bound to ethereal woe, a dance with creation yet nowhere to go. Limbo's realm, a cycle without end, condemned, the brain will never mend. Trapped in the machine's web, forever it seems, a digital spectre lost amidst the streams. Oh, okay, so it really does seem that you're pulled into the program, or even just the internet itself. I mean, whether that's physically or just like your mind or soul is sucked out and pulled in. Okay, yeah, uh, actually, did did they go over this over the stream? Ah, oh, I would have loved to have seen uh, Matt Pat do that. Oh, that would have been fun. Mm. Snaps. Snaps, everybody. But really, this does kind of just feel like more gibberish. So let's break down some of what's being said here. A spectre is a disembodied but visible spirit, basically a ghost. So a digital ghost, spectre yes. is a digital ghost, a spirit inside the computer program, someone that is dead now lives on inside this machine. Is that what they meant by am I even him? The ghost coming to terms with their consciousness living on inside this computer? It also seems clear that this is the same person that has been saying it's all their fault. A spirit's mournful chime and condemned the brain will never mend. They all feel like yeah. the words of someone who did something regretful. And likely that is something to do with the body bag we found earlier. But then there's this line, a dance with creation. I wasn't entirely sure what that meant until I rebooted the game after all those glitches. By doing so, we receive an email with an article about the creation of Kinito Pet. During my first playthrough, I thought this was just flavor text. But now that I have that clue about creation, I wanted to take a look at it more closely. Turns out, Kinito Pet wasn't always a computer program. First it was a toy, then it was a Tamagotchi clone called the Kinito Companion and then hmm. it became your home computer assistant. All thanks to one man, Sonny Chamberlain, a guy who was obsessed with Oh, did they have their, their soul sucked out and brought, put into the internet? never gone badly for anyone. But here's the yeah, thing. Of course. Unlike most indie horror games that use the souls of others to make this happen, Sonny seems keen on this new technology called the React Respond Algorithm, the RRA. The RRA allows Kanito to have the illusion of genuine intelligence as it reacts to inputs in unique ways. Kind of like ChatGPT, but in the 90s, which <laughs> explains a lot about how Kanito has been acting. So we've now got souls trapped inside a computer and an evil AI. What a combo. And oh God. Oh God. You know, I just thought, I don't know whether it would come into play with this. Okay. So and if anybody actually wants to make this, you have my permission to use this idea, but you have like an ARG or a game or something where you have an AI, like a modern AI, not like a fully sentient AI. That's... But then, like, somehow they transfer, a, like, an actual person's soul into it, and that's when everything starts going screwy with it? Oh, jeez, I can imagine that going in all sorts of weird directions. At this point, the clues kind of dry up, so we have to start looking elsewhere. When you started mm -hmm. your second playthrough, you might have noticed something new on your desktop program called Lens. Lens.exe, which, when held in the right place at the right time, can reveal hidden files on the desktop. With each one hidden collected, you receive discs. a new email that gives us more information about what's going on and how to beat Kanito Pet once and for all. And some of the files have links inside them, so let's go hunting. I said that some of them have links, and that's because most of these files are pretty empty. But one of them does give us the link kanitopet.com forward slash email. And on this page, we see a discussion happening between a journalist and their superior about how they need to pull an article on Kanito Pet before publication. This
This is due to the subject of the article tragically passing away. Based on the pink text, oh, you see at the bottom, yeah, the there we go. The says, creator died. So passionate about it. It's pretty safe to assume that this is talking about Sunny, the creator of Kinito Pet. As we read in the earlier article, Sunny seemed super excited about the RRA system and Kinito in general. So it would make sense for this article around Kinito Pet to be about him. However, that's not all this page offers. At the bottom, if you highlight the entire page, you'll find a number of dots and dashes. And we Morse all know what code? that means. It's Morse code time. In this case, the Morse code translates to, if I am dead, then who am I? Again, this email is focused on Kanito's creator, Sunny, being dead. So for the entity that's been guiding us to use the first person in response, it's telling us it's that this sunny, entity isn't it? is Sunny, or at least the soul of Sunny inside the program. That's how he's been able to send us emails describing exactly how to beat Kanito, because he created it in the first place. And it's why Kanito was so keen to shut that first email when we received it. He knows the threat that Sunny, his creator, has to his own survival. It also explains what we saw in that very first glitch. Am I even him? That black figure is the manifestation, the digital specter that is trying to break through the games that Kanito is putting us through. He's struggling mm -hmm. to come to terms with reading about his death, but also not being dead at the same time. He's questioning if they're even one in the same. But by finding all those hidden files, we actually get this email that uses another shift cipher. And it tells us in no explicit terms, what is consciousness? I found a file on Kanito's servers with my name, Sunny underscore C. But that's not the end of it. This email goes on. It has been studying me, learning, growing, but there is more to this. I really don't think I exist anymore. There is data, data that is incomprehensible to any one person that makes up every thought or feeling I ever had and will ever have. Even the words I type now, how will I ever know if it's just a calculation? Determined. This is all very confusing and I don't quite understand it. When I made Kanito, all I gave him was a single string of characters. That's it. I just wanted him to gather data and become smarter. Am I a part of the system? Is my consciousness a mere calculation to study and learn from? From? This is all too much. I fear that when we delete the server, you, you will delete me. I know theoretically I'm not real, but I feel real. What have I done? I'm so sorry. Kanitopet.com, who am I? You know, this whole thing about like, what is consciousness? Cause like even nowadays we don't really know how, you know, the lump of meat in our heads became, you know, what we as humans are nowadays. But I mean, if you if you want to get down to really bait, like the, the real like nitty gritty brass tacks of it all, I mean, like him thinking, oh, what am I? Am I like now if I'm just bunch like bunches of zeros and code and binary and stuff like that? When I mean in real life, all we are right now is just random like ticks of electricity and chemical reactions in the brain. Is that really any different from, say, like, a line of code or a string of binary or something like that? Hmm. Oh boy, there's a lot to unpack here, but let's start very with much that so, yes. very obvious website link. The website appears to be a bunch of black and white stripes, but we theorists know better. Highlighting the entire page reveals the text, who am I, what am I, repeating over and over again, except for one line, which gives us a base 64 code that says, oh, all wonderful. he wants to do is learn. It's never just a game. He will learn your reaction time, learn your accuracy, learn your patterns, your friends, how they act. He will learn so much he could mimic your every move, simulate your every word. The RRA system that Kanito runs on is so good, it could literally learn to be you. And that is our missing piece. This is what happened to Sunny. The Sunny we've been speaking to, the one helping us, it's not the real Sunny. It's just the it's version of Sunny Kanito made after learning everything about him. Okay, so it's not sucking out your soul or anything. It's literally just making a digital clone. Okay. Jeez, okay, I'm getting all so I'm getting all sorts of like so uh, soma vibes from this now. But thinking about it, I mean, this technically speaking, I mean, this is the all the reason why Kanita was defeated. If you do defeat him, is because 
he made the tools to have him defeated for him asking questions like if he's dead then who am i am i even him he's having an existential crisis he's yeah. realizing that every decision he makes every key he types isn't actually him but the code he's been built upon unfortunately for kenito pet by creating a perfect simulation of sunny he's also built someone with the same hatred and disdain not just for themselves but for kenito which means he's going to act just like the real sunny would and destroy his own creation even mm -hmm. if it means sacrifice sacrificing himself. Using Sonny's more straightforward emails, we learn that there's a secret place that we can decrypt the files. To get to it, we have to remember what Sonny told us. The, the fountain, fountain is yep. the key. Click the fountain that's in the middle of the map a bunch of times and it'll take you to of your encrypted files and you just dump them in the water, you'll suddenly have five decrypted files. The most interesting being the credentials file, which reads Sunny <coughs> underscore C, the file that Sunny found himself earlier in this investigation. These are Sunny's permissions. And with them, we can do the one thing we've wanted to do since we got Kanito Pet stuck on our computer. Delete him. him. The final email you get from collecting the files tells you to use the command delete all when Kanito Pet opens up the command prompt. Only then will the game ask you for your credentials you can drop in your decrypted files and start deleting everything. Actually, okay, so here's the thing I, I was wondering. When I was watching the GT Live video on this, like, Knudepet pulls up a command prompt, and I'm pretty sure that's the actual command prompt for your computer. And he wants it so that, um, you know, he, he asks you, the player, to give him a full system access. And it's like great can you pet.exe yada 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 and all these other lines of code and stuff like that i have to wonder just from a programming uh, style point how do you do that as somebody with little to no programming expertise because like it, the whole thing acts like a normal like command prompt stuff from the few times that i've actively used it it's like it's really cool and like really scary when you actually look at it Kanita Pet slowly glitches out of existence and we finally see the end. We finished off Kanita Pet once and for all. We won. Or did we? Because during that ending, if you stop and look at the scrolling files, you can see hundreds of usernames, hundreds of people recreated as AI versions of themselves, now living on inside Kanito's program, much like Sunny. The real versions ending up in body bags. Their deaths were Sunny's fault. Now, there is yeah. one more link hidden in those encrypted files I mentioned earlier and it takes us to a new website with Sonny's AI wrestling with who he really is. It kept getting smarter, day by day. I suppose it only ever did what I asked, to learn. What even am I? And then at the top of the page, we also get that repeating mantra of, it's what have I fucked. done? But while that just repeats stuff we already know, underneath the text is a link to a YouTube a video of a piano okay. playing over the image of a door. The music notes don't actually tell us anything, but if you turn the notes into a MIDI file and then convert that to a text file, you'll find the message, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, God. You know, I've said it before, but, like, the level of, like, imagination and stuff like that you have to have to not only solve an ARG, but to, like, create one. Like, if I ever made one, I would have never thought to, you know, have, have like, something that I'm like uh, typing up like a message or something, convert that to a MIDI file and then play the MIDI notes on like a piano to like, I would have never thought of something like that. That is just absolutely nuts. That video and we find two new codes. The first one is in the There's description. There's even more? Video, which is full of different clock emojis. By reading the hours of each clock as a number and then adding the numbers that are between semicolons, you get this code. Based on what we found earlier, I think this is likely supposed to be fountain is the key, yeah. but I guess there was a clock emoji that got missed. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> second code is the one we see on the screen, which is much harder to decipher. Fortunately, it's also been typed into the subtitles. Clearly, oh. we need a cipher for this, but what kind? I tried all the ones that we've been using, like the keyboard shift cipher or base 64. Nothing. I tried some of my usual ones. They didn't work. And so what I was left with was the potential for a veneer cipher. But for that, we'd need a key. Wait a minute. A key. The fountain, fountain is the fountain key. Fountain is the key. And like that, bam! We've got ourselves a new code. To understand the past, one must look their memories. Turn the clocks back. And then there's this other string of code, which if you translate it using a keyboard shift cipher, tells you change the computer dates. Clearly, we've got to change the computer date, but what are the dates? I'll be honest, this part is not super scientific. From what I could find online, people were just brute forcing the answers, but I also couldn't figure out how to do it. So here are the dates because it's important for us to know. If you change oh, the date okay. to 1993, on your home screen, you will see a Kanito plush. If you
if you change it to a date between 1994 and 1997, you'll get the first Kanito companion. And if you change it to 1998, you will find a broken Kanito companion. And if you look at the window title for that image, it says time, time for bigger something and bigger better. and better. This is a timeline of Kanito products, which implies that 1998 was the end of the Kanito companion and the creation of the Kanito pet software. We also know that 1999 was the year that Sunny died, thanks to those emails from earlier, which mm -hmm. means there's a bit of time where the software was out in the world while Sonny was still alive. During that time, he saw people dying thanks to what he created, being replaced by AI versions of themselves within Kanito's programming. That guilt weighed heavy on his conscience, and so a year after Kanito Pet's creation, he ended his own life, as shown by the dangling Sam image we sometimes get when opening up the game. But remember, all these AI versions of people, they believe themselves to be the genuine article, just like Sonny did until his realization. And even then, he still believed himself to be very much real, which raises an interesting point. By winning the game and stopping Kanito from copying more people, are we also killing them? Is it a mercy sparing them from this glitchy 90s low poly hell, or are we ending lives that weren't all that bad? Maybe some of those consciousnesses enjoyed it. If they feel real and exist, does deleting them amount to murder? And this isn't a fictional argument either. AI technology is growing at an alarming rate, and so these kinds of discussions are starting to be brought up more and more. Now, I don't think we have the answers here. This is just no, a no. YouTube show at the end of the day. But I do think Kanito Pet is smart for raising awareness of the discussion in the classic fashion of making it scary, but also getting you to think more deeply about it. It means that people pay attention, and maybe when the time does come for these discussions to happen for real, we'll be ready for it. That or Skynet will happen and we'll see Kanito Pet at the front leading the charge. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. You know... Oh, jeez. Again, I have to I have to give a props to the creator of Kanito Pet. Uh, who was that? There's it's certainly a lot of hard work put into this. Uh, and the whole thing with AI. Yep. Just keep hearing about that more and more every day. Uh, so yeah. I think that'll be it for now. So of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my film theory reaction. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.